Hey, how's it going? It's been a minute since I did this type of intro, but I did need some extended time to set up today's video. Magikarp is our titular character, and it, along with Caterpie, Metapod, and Kakuna, are the four Pokemon that cannot beat the game by themselves, and that's because Struggle only does normal damage in Gen 1, rather than topless damage like it does in other generations, and they just can't progress past the Ghost and Pokemon Tower. Now, a few months ago, I was minding my own business looking at chat, and someone said the phrase, Dragon Rage Magikarp and it got me thinking and I started doing research. Now in July 1998, a magazine published by Shogakukan had a contest. 20 players could win a rare Magikarp trading card along with a level 15 Magikarp that knows Dragon Rage and Pokemon Red and Blue and that's the basis for today's video. Now let's keep taking it a little further. There were also a ton of these New York Poke Center events and there was a specific one from January 24th to the 30th that gave trainers who put their Generation 2 cartridges in these machines right here a Magikarp with bubble and this is a side note all the way up until generation 5 this was the only way Magikarp could utilize its special attack now the idea for this video is similar to my egg move runs where I take struggling Pokemon and I use Bulbapedia's transfer from another generation section and then I use that Pokemon in red and blue but unlike those runs where you could legitimately get these Pokemon you could recreate it this is more of a suspend your disbelief scenario now today I will be combining the Gen 2 Bubble Magikarp with the University Magikarp with Dragon Rage and honestly I was really excited for this run and I'm just ready to dive into the footage. Now right from the start, let's address the elephant in the room and let's take a peek at Magikarp's stats. The problems that Magikarp has isn't just the shallow move pool, it's the fact that we are dealing with things like 20 base HP, 10 base attack, and 20 base special. To put these stats into further context, 20 in HP and 10 in attack are both tied for 150 out of 151 and 20 base special well guys that's a tie between multiple pokemon for the 151st last spot 80 base speed is the one positive that we have here and the thing that's gonna hurt us the most and it usually does as we get deeper and deeper into the run is that slow leveling group now as for the start of the run we really just don't have to linger here let's talk about dragon rage real quick it's got 10 power points it's not that much but it always does 40 flat HP damage what makes it so good for the early game is that it's quite a bit before you even encounter a Pokemon that has 40 HP so it goes without saying that we just crush everything now just in the interest of being in the slow leveling group and not falling behind and since everything's a one-shot anyway I do pretty much tackle every single trainer I do the optional rival fight I do all the bug catchers I even hit up the light years junior trainer but eventually Eventually, we quickly find our way to Brock. And we don't even need battle music this week because, like I just said, his Pokemon don't have 40 HP and they're easy one shots. And just like that, we already have the Boulder Badge. Now moving forward, the only thing I really have to say is that 10 power points really limits you. And you might think that you could use Bubble, but Bubble's severely weak. And the fact that we have the last rank special means that it doesn't really have much uses right now. So the 10 power points of Dragon Rage is pretty much what we're relying on. Now we could skip ahead a little bit into Mount Moon and some keen eye viewers might notice that I didn't have my resets up yet so I fixed it right here but anyway the point is that the Raticate Grunt right here I fought for extra experience is the first Pokemon that I encounter that has over 40 HP and will take multiple turns. Luckily we don't have to reset just yet and we can move on but this is just an optional battle. Let's look at the first Pokemon that has over 40 HP in a mandatory battle and it's the Grimer that belongs to the super nerd here. It has 43 HP and outside of the Raticate this is the only Pokemon that you'll encounter from here and this almost ends the little part of the game where it's just it's just face rolling with this 40 flat HP damage and things are gonna slowly start to pick up gradually as we make our way to the next few gems. It might surprise some people but I do take on Misty first before anything else and that's because her good AI will make her only use moves like tackle and even 
even though her Pokemon do have more than 40 HP, I'm pretty confident that I can survive one hit because Magikarp's defense isn't too bad. And we take this one fairly convincingly. Now, it's a shame that Magikarp just learns nothing. You can look at that pathetic moveset on the side. Bubble Beam would have been really good, but we have to work with what we got. And instead, let's take a look at rival number two. And like always, the age old question is, will you get sand attacked? And today, I don't. And a lot of these Pokemon are gonna start taking two Dragon Rages to take out. I don't take a sand attack. We move on in the fight. I do get extremely low and the Bulbasaur definitely could have taken me out, but it just goes for a growl. And that allows me to get off my second Dragon Rage. And honestly, zero resets. We're not looking that bad right now. After this, we start to see an exponential increase in the amount of Pokemon that have more than 40 HP. But with 80 base speed, it's not really that much of an issue because you're gonna go first, use a Dragon Rage, take whatever they throw at you, and then you can finish it off in the next turn. There's not much to note here. I don't have any resets, and we can just keep cruising along down to the SSN. I do pick up the optional rare candy behind the gentleman, and now we can just take a look at rival number three. Once again, I avoid sand attack, and this one is very similar to rival number two. There's really not much to talk about. I make it through on the first try, but I do have to use an ether before the fight, and notice how even being at full PP for Dragon Rage, just this one little minuscule battle, kind of early in the game, takes me really low. And the fact that you have to use seven of your 10 PP just for little fights like this is gonna become more of a problem as the game progresses, but for now, let's not worry about it. And instead, let's take a look at Surge real quick. I do save it, and then I use a Super Potion and an Elixir for this fight, and I save it before I do that, but because I'm not sure if I'll be able to do this fight. Just like we've been seeing more and more of, Surge's Pokemon will take more than one Dragon Rage, and even though Voltorb has no electric types, Sonic Boom's flat 20 health damage combined with our bad 20 base HP does a lot of damage. Now Pikachu and Raichu have electric moves, so it makes this fight really hard. So it goes without saying that I have my first reset of the run here. And while some of this footage is playing in the background, I'm gonna insert this later in the video. Usually I begin with it, but I'm just gonna say if you've made it this far, likes and comments help channels grow the most. And if you wanna help me out right now, just scroll down and type in splash. And I decided to hold off on that because usually I put it at the start and I'm trying to see with the analytics if that hurts my run time, but enough of that boring stuff. Surge absolutely destroys me. I not only have my first reset here, I have my second, my third, and my fourth. And after that, I decide it's not worth it. I don't need to rely on just pure luck to get past this fight. And I can just come back later and finish it then. Now we're moving on to Rock Tunnel. I did have one reset on the junior trainer that wants to paralyze you and wrap you. But outside of that, things are normal. But I do want to highlight that we see this super nerd Slowpoke here. And this is the first Pokemon that has over that 80 HP threshold. And that means we're going to slowly start to see Pokemon that can take three Dragon Rages start to appear and slowly trickle into the mix. And that's when things start to get a little dicey. From there, let's just skip to the Rocket Hideout in Celadon. There are two PP ups, one outside, one inside, and that really helps Dragon Rage so that we're not as limited as we usually are. And the one thing that I will say about this run in general is that there are so many times that we're going to see ahead to where you just run out of power points, you stand no chance in the battle without Dragon Rage, and you have to completely leave a dungeon like Rocket Hideout, heal up, and then back track. It's very tedious, it's very time consuming, and it's really just beginning around this section to where the limitations of Magikarp in general start to really show its head. And I just want to say this, Bubble is very weak. I mentioned it at the start, I haven't showed it yet. Look at this footage, I can't one hit the Onyx or the Rhyhorn, and then Kangaskhan is one of those Pokemon that takes three Dragon Rages, and here I just have a couple of resets, and this is usually one of the easiest fights in about 99% of the runs, so this tells you kind of what's in store for our future. If you were kind of hoping that Magikarp was going to be some hero and come out with some really good run. From there, I face a conundrum. Either I can backtrack to Surge to get access to Fly, or I can go waste a lot of time manually walking to Pokemon Tower. And I figured with a few extra levels, maybe Surge will be a little bit easier this time.
first up is Voltorb, and we do not want to see a Sonic Boom here, and it only goes for Tackle, and my two Dragon Rages in that time can finish it off. Next up is Pikachu, and the main difference here is that Pikachu was getting a bunch of moves off on me, but here I outspeed, go for Dragon Rage, it gets an X speed, and the extra levels means that I still outspeed it, meaning that I pretty much get to take it out for free. Now we can look at the Raichu, I'm pretty much at full health here. I go for Dragon Rage, it goes for only a Thundershock, I survive, and the second Dragon Rage takes it out, and that's what I thought at the time was one of the hardest challenges down. Now we'll see more challenges ahead but keep that in mind this is what I thought was gonna be a hard fight and you'll see how funny that is later normally we would skip past Pokemon Tower just to save some time for our videos but today guys we're covering rival number four and that's probably not a good sign now things start out like usual you avoid sand attack we seen Pidgeotto several times we out level it by a lot we can take it out easy the problem here and maybe this is some foreshadowing is that Gyarados is second and there's a lot of similar runs but I just I don't have an answer for Gyarados. Not only do I not have an answer for Gyarados, I only have 40 flat points of HP damage to do to it. And you can quickly see how in these runs, even on the very weak rival number four fight, I'm really struggling when something can survive a couple of Dragon Rages. I reset a lot here. I reset five times in total. And at, this was the point I was gonna practice this run. I was really gonna refine it. And I was hoping to have some really optimized run. But I think it was a point like this to where I was just like oh no this could be like a ditto type run if I'm having trouble this early but let's not panic just yet let's just keep the run going let's keep it light and let's get past the rest of Pokemon Tower because eventually we do get past this we're at 14 resets things are not that bad right now all things considered and my friends I would say that this is where things start to feel very rough I know that I'm already in trouble I can feel it coming I want some extra levels here and this is where the resets really start to flare up now i go to cycling road i want to train on the trainers here and this is where you start to see a lot of three hit dragon breath pokemon and basically there's not a battle here that's not a threat to knock you out everything can force a reset and i had several here along with having to heal your power points because you need to save things like ethers and elixir for the end game so it's very tedious and it's not that great now speaking of not great let's just go to Erica's gym I figured hey they're a lot lower level maybe I'll be able to take them out and once again I'm a sucker this happens on a lot of my videos somehow I talk myself into going against these lasses or beauties that have paralyzed rap strategies and it's very oh it makes me so mad I can't even talk about it anyway I have a ton of resets here but eventually I do take out pretty much all of Erica's trainers outside of maybe two of them right here i get as much money as i can and then i make another celadon mart visit this is my second one of the run i pick up some more calciums that's the thing i think will help me the most because it's just a double dip stat you get some extra damage you get some extra defense and i'm also focused a little bit on hp ups usually i'll pick up hp ups there's a couple of free ones in the game and i'll sell them for more vitamins but in a run like this having more hp is very valuable so that's kind of the stuff i'm focusing on and now now I take a look at Koga's gym. I take a peek in there to see what we can get into. And we just get beat down in here. It's not a great sign that Koga's very first juggler is really beating us up this hard. And I reset lots of times here when it's all said and done. I try a few times to see if I can get some better luck because I feel like I'm close. But at the end of the day, I'm at 30 resets. And then the desperation starts to kick in. And the realization that this run isn't good has really kicked into full gear so I head east of Fuchsia and we start to take out trainers there now keep in mind it's still not great no battle with Magikarp after the mid game is really that great so you've seen how they went you don't really need to see them I have some more resets here and there but eventually we slowly but surely Dragon Rage our way to higher and higher levels now let's cut back at reset number 34 we're back in Koga's gym we're back at the first juggler I'm trying to see if I'm ready for this challenge and the answer to that is kinda. I do make it past. I do have to reset one more time. And I'm able to barely skin by. It doesn't feel great, but at least we're making progress and we're not grinded to a halt to where we have to do wild Pokemon just yet. It does kind of suck that you have to backtrack to heal your PP and then come back.
come back in, but it is what it is. Let's continue on. With all these struggles going on, I figure it's a great idea to battle every trainer in Koga's gym. And you guys might know that there are some nightmare matchups in here for a lot of Pokemon. And we have one here today. This tamer that has the Arbok, Sandslash, and another Arbok is just a nightmare. There's a lot of things that are going to be a nightmare for this run. But it's stuff like this, like inconsequential trainers. You're just trying to get a couple of extra experience to smooth things out and I just get absolutely destroyed. That's the only way to really describe it. It takes me several times to get past this one and you'll notice by the end of this little clip that we're at 38 resets and mind you that like if we had a run that had 20 resets that would be massive. The Rhydon video had 18 on one trainer and that's still kind of pretty significant. You can tell a Pokemon really struggled but when you're at 38 resets and you've barely battled any gems at all it just says a lot about the state of this run. I want you to guys to really I want to emphasize that and I want you guys to to take note and now after I clean everything up we can take our first look at Koga and this one is rough I'm only going to show one attempt but minimize and smoke screen combined with just having the flat damage and Pokemon's HP pool just getting bigger and bigger means that this one's just really tough and I can just I got a feel for it and I knew that I needed to move on so I head back east of fuchsia and we clean up the rest of the trainers that we miss i also go back to cycling road i clean up some more trainers and with a couple of more levels under my belt i'll go back to koga because i want to get this one done now the original plan i had here was to just black out on koga and keep the experience respawn at the poke center and just keep retrying over and over but what ends up happening is i just make it pass and it really wasn't that bad i guess there was a little luck involved here but at this point 40 resets deep of over three and a half hours into the run i really don't care anymore i'll take it the speed badge boost really isn't that significant for a pokemon that has a lot of extra levels at this point in the game and has 80 base speed but let's just keep rolling next just about the only thing i could do besides erica is go to Silphco. and today just the way this run has already went you already know that there's going to be a lot of extra grinding today so that's what i set out to do i do the normal stuff i back battle pretty much I think every single trainer inside of Seal. I work my way towards the shortcut on the third floor that leads to the ninth floor where the beds to get your PP back is and I use that as a base and I slowly and systematically just take out everything that I can. When it's all said and done we are at about four and a half hours of end game time. We have a few extra resets but we are level 52 and that leads us straight into rival number five. Now I know I say this about a lot of fights that we're getting hard, getting tough, Tough, but this one is the one this is the fight to where I was like oh man this just isn't gonna be very fun is it and this one is similar to rival number four but worse like it always is this is notoriously one of the toughest fights usually for a lot of runs and the fact that rival number four gave us problems you just already know we have Pidgeot first with sand attack so that's just very annoying Gyarados is still second in the order and things only have gotten harder while we're still doing the same 40 points of damage and even if you get a miraculous run like I do on this attempt right here and you make it to the Venusaur at pretty much full health, well, Razor Leaf, guys, it's gonna kill you. It makes this fight so hard. If you make it past the Alakazam, you make it past the Gyarados, you just got Razor Leaf waiting on you. And I'm gonna admit right here, I made a mistake by picking Venusaur for the rival Pokemon in this run because this is just a fun run. It's not on a tier list or anything and it was never gonna be a good run, but I made this run much more more difficult by having that razor leaf threat but I'm sure you guys will enjoy it just the same but it's just not very good that's all I'll say about it right now I reset a little more and then I do what only the most desperate of runs do I go to the fighting dojo now it's not really that bad here like I said earlier Magikarp actually has pretty decent defense so anything using physical attacks isn't that bad and Dragon Rage while falling off a lot during this mid game is still pretty potent I make it past all these fights fairly easy and then I return. After a couple of more failures, I do what I just talked about on Koga that I was originally going to do. I deposit my HM Pokemon and I'm just going to take the experience, black out, and redo this fight over and over as long as it takes because if you didn't know, I'm sure a lot of you do, you get 50% extra experience from trainer battles and the fact that rival number 5 has evolved Pokemon that are just, they're very experience rich. So if you can just make it past 2 or 3 
three of these Pokemon every time, you'll be getting really good experience. So I do that. And if you're wondering, and I guess this is going to be personal preference for whoever's doing the runs, you might be thinking how this interacts with the reset counter, and resetting to me means resetting the game. This is, to me, is a strategic use of getting experience, therefore I don't count it as a reset, but I'm sure I could understand why somebody would, but this is my channel, so today these don't count. So how long do I have to do this before I can make it past the fight? Well, my friends, I spend about an hour of in-game time. We're nearing six hours at this point. I'm level 61 going into this fight, and the usual things that you would think to make it through the fight happen. I don't really take sand attack. I don't really take much damage at all. Gyarados does do some damage, but it's not too bad. Growlithe is Growlithe. And I do get really hurt on the Alakazam. And remember guys, at this point, my head's just in grind mode. I'm just wondering what I have to do to get past this run. And I'm going into the Venusaur at 28 HP, meaning that pretty much it can kill me no matter what. And I don't really get surprised with Pokemon runs anymore. I do them so often. But here, I was very shocked because Venusaur just goes for three straight Leech Seeds and that's it. And I just win. And I did not think that I would win just yet. And there's no way that I should have won, but I did. And here we are. I know that I got extremely lucky there. I spent about an hour grinding up. I probably needed more levels, but I'm gonna take it. But at this point in the run, I'm getting a sneaking suspicion that this might be another level 100 run, a distinction that only existed with Ditto a long time ago, a part of my life I never want to think about again. From there, I take a not really that brisk of a walk today. It's kind of a slow, downtrodden, depressed swim, if I'm being honest here. And I even forget to use a repel. Even after I encounter a Pokemon, at this point, I'm so dejected. I don't even care. I'm just like, take me under tentacles. But anyway, we make it down, and I am doing a lot of extra battles today. I'm gonna need every single battle I can get because that rival five fight was horrendous, and I know that it's only gonna get tougher as HP pools continue to expand. And I guess it's worth noting that at this point, Bubble's really not that bad. Now you might be thinking, hey Matt, you are level 63 while you are fighting mid 30 range Pokemon. And to that, I say, shut up, let me have my moment. And finally, when that's all over, we get a little bit of Tombstoner, brother. And we can just take a look at Blaine. And there's not much to dive into. I am just kind of proud of, of Magikarp for using Bubble this fight. I use it solely against his Pokemon. I don't even use a single Dragon Rage. And I think that says a lot about Magikarp, how much we've grown as an individual and how much we've really learned about ourselves during this run. But guys, there's not much more easier spots coming up. So let's just get back to it. Let's go back to reality. Now let's take a look at Sabrina and obviously Obviously with our worst special, we're going to get nuked by a psychic and that's what happens for my first reset, but there are other problems. Not only do you have to worry about this high physical damage just obliterating you, the thing that annoyed me the most and made this as hard as it was, was Venomoth. Since Dragon Rage is our primary source of damage and we're pretty much never going to one shot anything outside of some few exceptions, that means it's pretty much always going to paralyze us and Alakazam was already hard, but pretty much it guaranteeing that we're going to go in there paralyzed just makes it that much harder and this one's not great. I reset quite a bit and we're not going to look at every single reset because why would we? Eventually I do give up and I'm like well let's just go try Erica. What else do we have to lose? There's really not much more left to do. I don't want to grind wild Pokemon. Let's just get this over with now. Let's see how bad the Razor Leaf's going to hurt. And actually Razor Leaf doesn't hurt that bad. I can survive two of them. The problem here in this situation is that Erica just decides that she's never going to miss a sleep powder and if you're asleep tanking razor leaves you're not going to last very long and I reset a, quite a few times here and I give up and we go somewhere else once again and at this point I really don't have any options there's really not many places I can go so I decide to go back to Saffron and I fight Sabrina's trainer in her gym and needless to say things aren't that great here now just for example here's this channeler that has two ghastlies and a haunter and and they have Hypnosis and Confuse Ray, and honestly, they're just really upsetting. It's almost like opening a little bitty glimpse into the future at Agatha, and I'm not too 
too pleased about having to think about that right now while we still have all this other stuff going on. And now that we're older, a little bit wiser, I do make my way back to Sabrina and we're just doing the same exact strategy. But I would like to say that Tackle can actually do some decent damage and I have all right crit. So that means that we can really do a number on these if we get lucky. Now eventually I do get that luck. I crit the Kadabra, and that means I'm at pretty good health when I finally get paralyzed inevitably by the annoying Venomoth, and I just have enough health. I get a little bit of luck, but at the end of the day, I barely get by, but I do obtain the sixth badge, and progress in a run like this always feels pretty good. And now we only have Erica left. She's very scary, and I don't want to do something silly like go grind wild Pokemon, so today, I'm doing something I normally don't enjoy doing, and that's fishing for luck. And that one really salty person that says that's all I do, this one is dedicated specifically to you. Now basically, if it misses a razor leaf or it misses sleep powder, is pretty much my win condition here. Eventually, after a lot of trial and error, I get two missed sleeps and I'm able to get through the victory bell at full health. Now guys, let's talk about Tangela. Guys, I think this might be the worst legitimate Pokemon. At this point, it only has 69 health, and that's very nice, but it's just so weak and pathetic, and you better not comment Tangela down below because I do not want to do that run, and I'm not going to, so you can't make me. And now there's only one gym badge left, and Giovanni is up, and I'm gonna battle every trainer here. And real quick, I'd like to shout out Magic for actually being able to one-shot this Rhyhorn. I'm very proud of it, but let's take a look at the gym. Overall, it's very easy. Outside of the tanky Nidoqueen that requires me to use Dragon Rage, Bubble does very well here, including a very impressive critical one-shot on the Rhydon, which is probably going to be the highlight of this entire run. I can't stress enough how scared I was of rival number six, so for the second time in the channel's history, I'm going to make my way to the power plant. There is an extra rare candy here that will help out being in the slow leveling group and there's some decent experience from all the electrodes and voltorbs and zapdos is here and all i can say is that I, I tried it's a legendary that's super effective against us and things go about like you would expect it's just not great and at the end of the day i try a handful of times we fail and i lick my wounds and i leave and now we gotta try to make some progress on rival number six and up front this fight is rough if rival number five was rough imagine how the upgrade is gonna be now several of his pokemon take four dragon rages to take out and things like rhyhorn and growlith are easily able to be handled by bubble but things just aren't that good it's very similar to the last fight i'm just not having any luck and i really don't see a solution because we're so limited with our move pool there's no strategy to be spoken of here except for maybe some more blackout grinding and the real issue with this fight is the alakazam i can make it through the first few pokemon they're not too bad and it's fairly consistent it's just the low special it's really hard to get past and imagine even if i did get past alakazam how much hp would i need to comfortably survive venusaur i reset quite a lot here as you would probably come to expect we're at a massive 77 resets, so I deposit my HM Pokemon, and just like with rival number 5, we're going to hurl ourselves at the brick wall, we're going to black out, keep the experience, and we're going to see just how long it takes before we can actually do this fight, and let's find out the answer through the magic of video editing. My friends, let's go all the way ahead to level 78, almost level 79, and we'll do a little play-by-play -play for the pretty lucky successful fight. As I've already said multiple times, Magikarp actually has solid defense, and with this much extra levels, Pidgeot can't do much to us, it doesn't have sand attack anymore, and what ends up happening is I only take a few points of damage, and we could just move on to the Rhyhorn, which is an easy one shot with Bubble, and as for Gyarados, we don't have an answer, here it just goes for some Leers, which are pretty good for the badge boost, and it goes for some Bites, and we honestly don't take that much damage at all, which is pretty good looking ahead and remember guys i have been grinding this fight for quite some time and this right here was about the best position i've been in because the growlith is next and it's just fodder for bubble and then we can look at that alakazam this was the one part of the fight that can just really do heavy damage to you and here it just sets up a reflect eventually we trigger a retroactive potion and i make it through without really taking any more significant damage and now we're looking at venusaur we're at pretty good health 
but I did not expect to make it through this right now. I'm going for Dragon Rages. It's going to take four of them to take it out. Fortunately, it misses its first Razor Leaf, and after that, it goes for two more Vine Whips, but we do have some Badge Boost, and we got massive levels at this point, so we actually tank those pretty well, and when it's all said and done, I hit my fourth Dragon Rage, and I didn't really expect to make it past this fight, but here we are. Now, something to note is that I felt like I got really lucky on this fight, so I made a copy of my save data just in case because I felt like the challenges ahead would require us to get to level 100 and I was afraid it would be a little tough to grind on the Elite Four, so just in case, I have a backup save because this fight right here was excellent to grind up experience on. Looking ahead at the Elite Four, there's not really much to say. We're Magikarp, we have the same strategy we've always been in, but at this high of a level, Tackle and Bubble can have some situational use, but for the most part, Dragon Rage is still going to be doing the heavy lifting. We've came a long way from Pallet Town to where we were just one-shotting everything, and these days, it's taking three, four, maybe even five shots with Dragon Rage just to get one single Pokemon down, and things are pretty tough. I don't use my rare candies here, because at level 88, we can just use all 12 of them and jump up to level 100, and since we're in the slow leveling group, experience will be hard to come by. So let's just dive into Lorelei. Let's take some uncandied level 79 attempts and let's just kind of talk about that for a second. This fight is a nightmare. This is the point of the game where you start to get to these final fights and there are so many Pokemon whose HP pools are so massive that you can start taking five Dragon Rages to knock them out. They are so tanky and you got Growl here which is decent for the badge boost but Tackle will have no use after that and Bubbles resisted and with only 16 uses of Dragon Rage, it's really hard to pick and choose when you're actually gonna use all of them, especially considering you can pretty much use every single bit of PP you have just on about three Pokemon, assuming that they don't get any super potions or anything like that. Now this isn't even the worst example of a fight. I do slowly make my way through this one and I think that it's going to be okay and that it's going to be alright, but I just get chipped down, chipped down, my PP is getting low and eventually Lapras knocks me out. Now let's not spend too much time on this one and instead I want to kind of highlight how much of a problem do Gong is at this level at this point in time. In this second attempt, you can see something that was absent in the first one, and that's rest. Here I'm trying to preserve some PP. I'm trying to use Tackle until I get growled, and then I'm going to use Bubble after that. But the damage is so low that rest and the fact that in red and blue AI trainers don't use PP, it means that it's a never ending loop. Look how long this Dugong attempt lasts, and when it's all said and done, I'm at negative six attack. I have 20. 24 attack and that means that tackle is all but useless I pretty much ran through my bubble PP and I do not have enough dragon rages to get to the fight So this one is a problem and from here we're gonna skip ahead just to see how consistent this was, to see how doable this was, because I did mention that I made a copy of my save file before rival number six in case I had to go back, I wanted to get all the way up to level 90 and just kind of see how this fight went. And if it was okay, maybe I wouldn't have to do that. But let's take a look at that level 90 attempt after a couple more resets here and there. The strategy is the same, even though we're bulkier now, a lot higher level. I want to use tackle until I get growled. And from there, I'll just swap over to bubble maybe mix in a Dragon Rage or two and just hope that it doesn't rest too much. And here it's really not that bad. We can move on to the Cloister. Its options are pretty much Spike Cannon and Supersonic. Both of those moves aren't very good. So this is kind of your spot just to pretty much spam Bubble and save some of that Dragon Rage for the later bulkier Pokemon. If you don't manage your Dragon Rage PP that well or you have a Growl on you like I do here, Slowbro can be bad if it starts to spam Amnesia. That means the already resisted bubbles are going to be doing even less and at this point you'll pretty much have to burn through five dragon rages just to make it past this one and you really don't want to have to do that but you're really in no threat of dying so it's not that bad and at this point I, you know I was pretty confident about the fight. Jinx is next and even though I'm boosted I'm pretty tanky at this point I'm able to whittle it down but I do get paralyzed my health is getting low and by the time I make it to Lapras just 
just that paralysis, the chance to miss my turn, along with confused rays and body slams, I just don't have what it takes. And considering that I'm level 90 right now, I went ahead and made the decision to go back to that save file before rival number 6, because it's clear that if I can't do this fight at level 90, imagine how hard the later fights are going to be, imagine how much more time I'm going to waste if I just don't go ahead and put in the time right now just to grind. So I revert back to that rival number 6 where I was just blacking out and keeping the experience, and we have already seen the strategy a little bit, and I just keep doing that, and my goal here, unless I get really lucky or something like that I plan on doing this all the way to level 88 and I'll go ahead and mention it again since I have 12 candies including the one from the power plant I can go from level 88 to 100 and at that point there's pretty much nothing else we can do to help us out so how long does that take let's just take a look a little over 70 minutes of in-game time later, we can pick back up, and this is where I hit level 88, and unfortunately, I don't just win the battle right here, but when I do black out, I have 11 of the 12 rare candies now, the last one's in Victory Road, that means I can use them, I can get up to a nice, clean level 99, and let's see if we can just make it past rival number 6 real quick, or if that was just an anomaly the first time, and if it's still a struggle, that'll kind of tell us a lot about the champion fight. I have to reset three more times times despite being level 99 and on the fourth time I get a pretty good attempt. Now there's not much to say we've already went over the fight but what's impressive to me is that I can tank a razor leaf pretty comfortably and I guess you should be able to but consider that we got we're a magic art we got 20 base special keep that in mind don't forget that and now we can move on and we got one more rare candy to get we're gonna use it and level 100 is is as good as it's gonna get guys so let's see how that goes. On the dugong, I get, I, I don't know if you would call this lucky or not, but I'm able to use tackle a lot. It doesn't go for growl, it doesn't go for anything like that, and I'm able to get off a bunch of tackles. Eventually it does use a couple, and I guess the one useful thing about being level 100, you don't really get to see it much, is that badge boost will stay forever just because you can't level up anymore, and that's pretty cool I guess. Eventually I do swap over to bubbles, I finish it off with a dragon rage, and I'm actually very healthy going into the cloister. And this one is just annoying, there's a lot of super potions being used at the end of this fight. Spike cannons just whittling me down, and things are just kind of annoying. But with a couple of badge boosts from the Dugong, Bubble is actually doing okay damage, and slowly but surely I chip away at this one, and we can look at the slow bro, and it's pretty much the same thing here, slow and steady. The only thing really to note here is that it gives me a couple of extra growls, and that means my stats are actually looking pretty formidable for a magic art. With all these boosts, it means that my special is good enough for Bubble to 3-shot the Jinx. And finally, we can take a look at that bulky boy Lapras. We do have 14 Dragon Rages left. And even though I get paralyzed and my health gets lower and lower and I'm getting chipped down and chipped down, persistence is the key and I'm able to make it through to the end of the fight. So Lorelei after level 100 is a one shot and that's just what I wanted to see because we have grinded so much this run, I was very happy to see a one shot here. And speaking of one shots, if there's anybody that can make Magikarp look like an all-star from this arduous journey that we've had through today's video, that's Bruno. I can one-shot the Onyxes, and honestly, they're making they're making Magikarp look good. If somebody watched this battle, they'd be thinking, how did this trainer struggle? This Magikarp's pretty good. But it's just Bruno. He's bad. We don't have to dwell any longer. And instead, let's take our focus over to Agatha. Now, a long time ago, specifically when I was grinding in Sabrina's gym, I got a glimpse into those ghost types, and then it hit me. Agatha is gonna be awful. And guys, if you don't mind, I'm not going to deep dive on this fight. I will show some attempts in the background and we'll kind of get into the successful attempt eventually, but there's a lot of resets here and there's not really any strategy. It, the Magikarp run in general, there's only a few things to look at. Are you badge boosted? Will tackle do more damage? Are they weak to bubble? If not, just spam Dragon Rage. And here, all you can do is just hope that you don't get put to sleep or you hope that a Confuse Ray doesn't make you hurt yourself a few times in a roll. And it's just kind of a roll of the dice. 
Agatha is a problem for a lot of runs, and it's just so luck based that there's not really any commentary on it. It's just frustrating, it's kind of difficult, and you just kind of have to be persistent because like I said earlier, I'm level 100. I can't learn any extra moves, and this is everything that Magikarp has right now. We are at full Magikarp power, so I gotta get it done somehow. And eventually after a handful of attempts and failures, I get really lucky. Agatha kind of threw the battle here. I'm at 27 health. Arbok comes in and I take an acid all the way down to 11 health. I hit a dragon rage and a bubble and I get it down to just a sliver of health. Literally if it uses anything on me I'm probably dead but she hard switches into her ace Gengar. This means I get a free move. I get off three dragon rages. It goes for a useless dream eater on its two attempts and then at the very end she hard swaps back into the Arbok. This gives me another free turn to finish it off since it's already low and then she has to bring back in the Gengar which is low itself and another Dragon Rage takes the fight. And there's just not much to say about it. It's Agatha. I don't have much strategy. Eventually I lucked out and I got it and this is just a notorious luck based fight but it is what it is. It's Agatha. Now it's time for Lance or as I like to call him if you didn't think you faced enough Gyaradoses already. We don't have an answer. We've established that and here with good AI it's going to go for Leer or Hyper beam you want the leers the badge boost is pretty good hyper beam can be bad dragon rage can be used as well it's in the middle of the two 40 flat damage isn't great but it's better than a hyper beam crit or a leer into a hyper beam or something like that now you can consistently take this one down the thing that really varies for this is how much damage you take sometimes it can be a ton sometimes you can only be missing about 20 health it's just kind of a coin flip at this point but it's not too bad I get knocked out on the second Dragonair, but a strategy that was emerging here is that if you get leered once or twice, Tackle actually starts to out damage Dragon Rage at a level 100. So finally you have a move that does more than 40 and it's not too bad, but it's still not great as evident by being taken out by the, the first Dragonair. On the second attempt, there's not much more to say about Gyarados. Hyper Beam, Leer, Dragon Rage, it's the same thing every time. Here we're a little bit more healthy than last time. And on the two Dragonairs, my tackles are doing pretty significant damage. I get a little lucky, I don't get taken out all the way. And then finally, we can start taking a look at these last Pokemon on and as for Aerodactyl you would really like more boost here but Bubble does do about half health with one Leer and it doesn't really look that bad we take it out it misses its takedown and we can move on to the Dragonite and you would think that maybe you got this but no at this point we're a little bit too low meaning that whatever it does it can just take us out with ease it's got hyper beam it's got slam it can pretty much do whatever it wants and here it just takes me out slam doesn't do that much damage we actually survive and if we we could have got lucky a couple of turns maybe we could have got this one down but you guys have seen how Lance goes we're gonna skip ahead guys because I've reset here a lot notice that we're at 91 resets for the first time in the channel's history ever since I started doing resets back in August we get to finally see 100 resets is everybody excited I know I was when I was playing this resetting 100 times on magic art now let's jump ahead we are at reset 106 and we're gonna pick straight back up at the Aerodactyl. Two bubbles will get it done for the Aerodactyl. I take a bite for my troubles. I'm at 88 HP, and for this next sequence, I can only say that the Dragonite just kind of bugged out, and I got lucky. It used three straight barriers, and all of those free turns just allowed me to kill it basically for free. I could have maybe tanked a hit, but it wasn't needed, and we do finally beat the fight, and this one was very rough. I reset a lot. I spent a lot of times here. And there's just something about being level 100 and not being able to improve your run or your Pokemon in any way and still getting beat down. But there's still one trainer. We really struggled on Rival 5. We really struggled on Rival number 6. So strap in, guys. We have one more struggle left today. And what can you really say about this fight that we've already seen a ton while we're sitting here at 106 whopping resets? 
I guess you can say that the Dragon Rage animation in this color palette looks very cool, but that is a mistake. I shouldn't be doing that. I need to save Dragon Rages, but you kind of live and learn. Eventually, the Pidgeot's not much of an issue. We can move on to the Alakazam. And I kind of fish for a crit here. It does set up Reflect. Tackle's doing pretty good damage until Reflect's up anyway, and I figured if I can crit, I can get by, but I do take kind of a lot of damage, and it's to be expected. Alakazam was one of the big problems in the other rival fights, so it is is what it is. It's our first attempt. I didn't expect to make it past. And we can move on to the Rhydon, which can quickly be taken out by a single bubble. Next up is Gyarados, and we've already sustained so much damage that it can pretty much take us out however it wants. But it seems like the Champion's Gyarados really prefers to use Dragon Rage. Now, I probably should do a little bit more research into that, but it used it a lot. It can also use Leer, which can be helpful looking forward, but we get taken out. That's the first attempt down. Now, I won't linger on this fight forever. Uh, if we take a look at the second attempt this is where I switch to bubble on the Pidgeot it does some pretty decent damage and among other things that this does for us is that Pidgeot likes to use mirror move if it mirror moves dragon rage we take a bunch of damage back but if it mirror moves bubble we don't take hardly anything this is more efficient it saves you some health it's safer and it saves dragon rage PP until the end of the fight so this is the play right here I'm not really gonna be talking about Pidgeot anymore instead let's watch us get absolutely destroyed by more Alakazam action. And destroyed might be a little bit too harsh. I take a Psychic, which does really good damage, obviously, and I take it out. And as for Rhydon, you already know, a bubble takes it out, and then it's time for Gary. And like I just mentioned, this fight often just felt like you were just, it was a dragon breath off, like who could kill each other first? And since I have to go through a Pidgeot, a Rhydon, and an Alakazam first, I usually lost this battle. Now, looking ahead, we don't really need to see just attempt after attempt after attempt instead I'm sure some of you will appreciate if we just jump really far ahead and kind of talk about what ended up working and what ended up being my final strategy for this one let's pick up at attempt 122 after 121 resets and here's kind of where I here's where the run went I had to fish for badge boost on this Rhydon. I wanted to get to negative six defense so that all my other stats were boosted pretty high. It ends up chipping me down with some fury attacks and whatnot, but eventually I get those tail whips, I get those leers, and if you're wondering about it, why does the champion's Rhydon have both leer and tail whip? And before you snarkily go down to your keyboard and type in, uh, it's because in Pokemon Red and Blue, they just use their latest learn set move and that's why they're both on their I know I'm being sarcastic let me have my moment as for Gyarados doing this strategy has been playing roulette for the last 10 or so resets and here I finally get some required luck it takes three tackles with six boosts to take it out and it just goes for two leers during that time which does no damage to me thankfully it didn't do a hyper beam because that wouldn't be too great but we're moving on to the Arcanine and this little thick puppy can't withstand too many bubbles and I'm honestly just impressed that Magikarp can take it out with just two of them. I know we're time six badge boosted, but it's Magikarp, guys. And finally up is the Razor Leaf Menace. And at this point, I was pretty much pulling my hair out. But here, we finally get things to work. Now, the time six boost are for the stuff that aren't Razor Leaf. You can't do anything about Razor Leaf. So here, I hit first with the tackle, charges up a solar beam. And you can see with all that special, I can actually survive a single solar beam. So that's pretty cool. I'm still just tackling away. It charges up for a second solar beam, but before it can get it to connect on the next turn, that's enough tackles to finish the match and take the run. And Magikarp has done it for what it's worth. This one started off in my head months ago and I was really excited for it. I thought it would be a fun run, but as I got deeper and deeper, I was just understanding that this was kind of like a slightly better ditto. And that's really the worst compliment or the worst thing you could say about a Pokemon run, I guess, because ditto was awful. And I did ditto at a time before I had all this software. I was worse at the game, but it is what it is. Magikarp, if you give it Dragon Rage and Bubble, it can beat the game. If you gave it just Dragon Rage, it could probably do the same because Tackle actually ended up being pretty good. Now, the slow leveling group, all I gotta say about the slow leveling group is I hate it. It made this run a lot worse than it needed to be. And 
I don't have anything else to say about Magikarp. There's 121 resets, guys. 121. Did you ever think you would see the day? So at the end of it all, Magikarp finishes with a level of 100. It joins Ditto in the level 100 club, so congratulations, Magikarp. But most importantly of all, it finishes with a final time of 10 hours, 22 minutes, and 43 seconds, and that is absolutely abysmal. But think about this, guys. This is faster than Abra. That's how low Abra is on the tier list. Now, I will say this. We have 121 resets, but if you want to be a stickler about it or you're kind of wondering, those rival fights that we just blacked out on, I would say that you could add about 60 to 75 extra resets if you really wanted to be like that about it, but I don't. My reset button that controls my overlay resets the game and since you're not resetting the game it doesn't do that but it is what it is I don't really want to talk about Magikarp anymore there's no tier list today since this is not a regular run but if it was ranked it'd be all the way down there with the NO tier next to Ditto and I'm sorry guys there's gonna be no Mewtwo today I am not gonna put this Magikarp through that this Magikarp has been through enough and I don't even think I mentioned it throughout the whole video its name was Prof P-R-O-F for professor because it was the universe University Magikarp. I probably should have said that an hour ago. Now only 30 people are going to see that, but it is what it is. And before I go, I'd like to say a special shout out to my channel members. We got Wigua, Tanner23, TR2G Hipster, Deal, Astrid, Nathan Meadows, Mariah Thompson, Meeves, JWJ, Mutus Dozen, Deezmaster, Cheesy Speakeasy, Josh Ferment, and Kendall C. It's much appreciated. And if this is kind of late, you're watching the video and you're thinking, I'm already not a member anymore. I already unsubscribed subscribed or why did it take so long for me to show up on the list it's simple i record audio sometimes i don't edit a video i don't get it out for like a month so you're usually watching a videos from a month behind i guess i don't know if that's a good way to explain it i'm not that far ahead but the way i do stuff my creative flow maybe i'll decide a video doesn't come out but anyway i'm done i appreciate you guys a lot i didn't tell you guys to subscribe but if you are some random person that made it this far into the video and you haven't yet consider it i do solo runs every week i'm gonna start doubling up on videos for the holiday season so if you like solo run content if you think i offer something unique do that if you're if you made it this far and you're an existing subscriber share the video around get the word out i appreciate you and we'll come back strong hopefully the next couple of runs i don't want to do much more runs than this dragon rage magic art really just kind of took over my brain i didn't realize just how bad it would be but it is what it is and i will catch you guys on the next video bye Thank you.